Hello, everyone. Welcome to Let's Talk. This is you, Sai. We are the special edition on Thursday of Giving Back Thursday because Tuesday is not enough because we're giving back every day during this pandemic. And today, my guest is John Buscemi, shoe designer that you may know, but also the owner and founder of Uncle Polly. So I want to jump right in and let's talk about how did you go from designing those amazing shoes to opening restaurants? Well, I have to give uh, a lot of the credit to my partner, Paul, uh, Uncle Polly. Uh, it was one of those, uh, you know, we've all been at uh, a backyard, uh, like uh, a barbecue or at someone's kitchen table, and you're just kind of shooting the shit one day. And we're just sitting in, a, in his backyard talking about, like, what's going on. And he was kind of, like, in a certain spot in his life, like, you know, just working, doing marketing for a company and just was like having a bit of a transition. And I have always had an aspiration to have a restaurant. Um, mm. I'm, uh, I'm known as like the foodie in my, uh, in my crew. Um, and I think, I think it was really, it really came down to necessity. I think we're from New York. I'm from Long Island and Paul's from Queens and we're sitting in his yard and we're like, let's go get a sandwich. And we're like, I mean, there's not too many places. We have Bay Cities in, in Santa Monica, you know, Larchmont wine and cheese on Larchmont, really good sandwiches. But there was just not the same. No one's really kind of created that feeling from back home. I guess back, home sure back home is New York. Back home. Yeah. Like, it, so New York, yeah. New York has like, you know, the bodega where you can go in and get, you know, a ham and Swiss for five bucks, or you can go to like a really great Italian, uh, like Italian meat and cheese store and get uh, an amazing, you know, hero as we call it, or hoagie or sub or whatever people call it. We wanted to create that experience out here. And it's not just the food, it's more of kind of like the vibe as well. We wanted mm -hmm. to have, you know, when you walk in, you have that smell right away. You you have the feeling of like a lush deli. There's like things everywhere for you to look at, pictures on the wall and, you know, sports figures and guys that come into the to the deli with their picture on the wall, like holding a sandwich, like that kind of, that vibe. And well, I, I love that was the way the restaurant, I love the way that, right. But I love the way that the restaurant has, it, it, it was established. Because when I heard that you guys were working on a restaurant, you would think that, okay, well, here's an amazing luxury brand shoe designer company partnering up to do a restaurant. You'd think that it's going to be like a Dina De Luca or whatnot. And yet yeah. you bought such a humanity to it. You bought such authenticity to it. And and even from the quality of the meat, it was so core. It's, it is, you know, I lived in New York, been to New York, made always there shooting. And you're right. It is so accessible to say, I want a bit of Italy. I can walk down the street and just get it mm -hmm. like, without any pretentiousness. Right. And when I walk in, right. I have that immediate warmth and reaction from the people from behind the counter. And and exactly. I don't know the poly a lot. In fact, it's only a mile down my house. I can walk there with my dog. And and it's when you go into this environment, you feel like you're back at home in New York. And you do feel like you are in a real authentic place. There's nothing pretentious about it. And the food is it's warm and it's, it's easy and accessible. And I think that's really, really important, especially with this time that we're going through. A hundred percent. And the feeling, you know, I've always had aspirational um, goals when it came to design and with my brand, it was always kind of like trying to outdo, you know, like real hip hop culture. I grew mm. up in like that, that situation in New York where, you know, you wanted to have the better sneakers than your 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 friend or your peer, or you wanted to have the better car or the better haircut or have a better dance move, whatever it was, whatever it was back in the days. For us, it was like, let's do this deli. Yeah, you're going to walk in and you're going to have that feeling, but then we're going to take you on another level mm. of, the, of the ingredients. And the quality of the food when it comes down to just the, even the lettuce and the tomato or the olive oil, where other people are like cutting corners. We don't cut those corners. We give you all the, the, the entire gamut is full high quality. So that's, that's the thing. It's kind of like the high low 
And that's what my brand was too. It was uh, that street feeling, but made in the luxury uh, aesthetic. Like it was like that, that juxtaposition. Well, I have every, to thank everything you I do for... usually is that. I, I love that. I love you say the high and low because I, I, I am not a brand wearing person. I'm always the low, I think, in the fashion business. Even though I'm in fashion, I don't I don't dress the high, but I do say I do want people to know on uh, every TV show thus far from American beauty star to American American next top model to my own yeah. shows to to Kitchen Asia. Everywhere I travel, I might be low up here, but I'm always a high on my feet with shiny shoes. Yeah. And that's you're also you so in good you're in good shape too. Work. And you're in good shape, you know? <laughs> Someone, someone doing... told me once. Someone once told me that fashion was made for guys that don't look good in a white t-shirt and jeans. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's kind of true. It's kind of right. It's true. Like business. you could be the best looking guy in the planet, and you could just throw on a Hanes t-shirt, Levi's. And a pair of uh, Chuck Taylors, and like you can go through the rest of your life, you know. And if you know it, you throw a beanie on and leather jacket during the summer. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And I think the cool thing with the shoes is, is like you can still be that guy and they step it up a little bit, and like, okay, I see the shoes, I understand. Oh you know? yeah, totally, I agree. And so, shoes tell the story of the whole person, right? Well, thank Pretty you much. for completing my story as I walk through the streets of Taiwan wearing beautiful shoes while I cook for the locals. It's awesome. It's awesome. Oh, thank you, man. I well, appreciate now, it, bro. With, and with, with, with the situation we're in right now, I know all the restaurants are, are adjusting and they're definitely, some are closed because they can't do curbside service. Mm -hmm. And I know you guys are doing great things for the community. Will you share that with us? Right. So... Basically, coincidentally, we were set up for uh, a pandemic, you know, in, in, and, you know, first off, I want to, you know, just give my heart and my thoughts out to all my friends in the restaurant business that are going through it. You know, if they need anything from us, like, please DM, reach out, call me, et cetera. If they, you know, there's actually, I'm on a group text with like 200, uh, 200 or more people on a WhatsApp group text of guys that own Nobu to catch wow. to guys and you know Nick Mathers from New York and you know this we're all talking constantly every day everyone's it's really brought the community together from a like a help standpoint but the first thing the we were going to close like we Paulie and I sat down across from each other and said I think we should close because it's a bit dangerous right because right. of um, you know your employees. You know, where are they at night? Uh, you know, where's the food coming from, et cetera. But we sat down and we said, let's just sit down, do the best in class and and have a format. And we started just by staying open and offering curbside. And mm -hmm. that started to do well. And we were getting phone calls like, hey, do you have sugar? Um, can I buy flour from you? Do you have eggs? Can I buy the lettuce that you're selling? And they were just kind of, I have to give the credit to Polly. He was the the catalyst for why don't we pivot and do the grocery element and just try and see if we can do a grocery list. We're ordering the stuff anyway. We'll just package it together. And you know, I don't need to get into numbers or anything, but our our business is actually up during this, mm -hmm. which is great. And I'm not trying to brag. I'm actually just happy we actually had to hire people during this. So that makes me feel good for not only the employees that we didn't have to let go, but we actually got to hire some extra people that are out of work and now they're not. So, you know, we're just trying to, uh, we're just trying to keep it going. I think like you said before with your last guest, there is a bit of a light at the end of the tunnel here mm -hmm. and we're just happy to be able to keep people employed. And then the last piece of that would be we've already had a community element to our our restaurant you know police and fire first responders uh city workers they they gravitate towards the deli because it's quick it's a quick lunch you come in you grab it you can eat it in the car um and we've had a relationship with the hospital network locally you know children's cedar sinai st john's urgent care facilities etc and right when we started to do this, we said any 
first line ambulance, first line, um, you come in, you eat for free. No questions asked to show your badge. And that's been really nice for, you know, we've had nurses coming to the deli that have been worked 16 hour shift. You know what I mean? We've had, uh, anonymous donors, celebrities, athletes, actresses, not so, I mean, I'm not, I don't need to mention any names, but donating $2,000, $1,000, just please buy as much food as possible for this emergency room, for this urgent care facility, for this hospital. So it's, it's been really amazing to see that side of it too, right? And, and, and you said it because really you know, in, in our business, it's such a competitive business in the food industry, and it's so nice to see something called communities getting formed and, and support and help each other. What I love hearing is that, that it wasn't because you want to make sure you make money and stay open, but you listen to the community, what they needed and what, what the employees also are so grateful that you're keeping the doors right. open. So they have jobs. Right. And, and with that, something incredible comes out of it. The fact that the first liners are now able to get to you guys and enjoy the food. If you didn't work in that fashion, you didn't listen to the, the community. You didn't answer the calling this this could never happen and that's something that i think is so important we all learn from is where in the food industry it's all about service it's about giving and sometimes we forget to listen and and and, and what they want rather than especially right. in this is a fashion right this is what you should wear because i'm telling you this is cool you don't tell me what's cool i tell you what's cool that's but right that's right Right now it's so amazing for me to hear people now to know what is quote unquote cool and what's necessary and like you said celebrities and influencers of the clients of mine we share a lot of same clients actually that you know through this time because the initiative i set up a let's talk that every single guest comes on the show i personally donate 500 masks to first responders and the guests are matching people like mila yovovich heard about this and said listen i want to help i just don't know how when she found out this initiative she donated thirty thousand masks to New York and it's shipped and we, wow. are, we are in a process of raising 100,000, we are 85,000 today and counting. So everything that we possibly can do and support in many little ways, it, 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 yes. it's a, it's for a greater good. It is all for the greater good. And, and I so appreciate that, that your type you. of service that you established to be a food that's accessible for people have become so important now because we know there are there are nobus yes we miss going to nobu you know this the chikonis we miss that but those are not ready grab and go for people who desperately need right now and then because the situation right that the type of restaurant you open through your fashion and you're able to do that and let's not men let's not forget that you also have this hot sauce that's phenomenal that, that people are dying over yeah yeah, that's a, another one. I just had, you know, uh, and then, I just had a meeting with my team yesterday uh, about that. It's a really, really amazing. Um, we're actually um, we're actually having um, we have a charity, a charitable element to our business. We've been donating to some charities, uh, 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 feeding um, a lot of the. There's a big homeless. There's a big homeless, mm -hmm. obviously, problem in Los Angeles. But I think with this, it's kind of people forget that there's kids that eat at school schools are closed and that's their pretty much sometimes their only meal during the day so um we have some uh some money going to that to, to to those charities and uh the guys at uh truck you know you know we're we're you know we can't directly do anything with the community but we're trying to do uh, as much as we can um uh in the in the last couple of months so john for, for through this time, we all, all have learned so much about giving and, and providing and listening to our community. Do you think that this knowledge that we have learned, this behavior that we're beginning to adopt will continue after the pandemic? You know, I think, I think that human beings innately um, are good and uh, innately uh, charitable um, animals. You know what I mean? I do. I've had amazing experiences in my life that are very similar to this without the pandemic. Um, and I've been, uh, I've been very lucky to been, uh, brought up by two parents that were very involved in the community and very involved in, uh, the school system and in extracurricular activities, coaching my coaching soccer teams and coaching lacrosse teams. And, 
you know, my mother being involved in the school system. And I have that's I have people like that surrounding me at all times. So I'm just lucky to be involved in that anyway. But to answer your question, I think absolutely yes, because, you know, my son, who's going to be 12 years old this this year, who's going with me to a food bank right in about 15 minutes to drop off food, you know, like he's going to learn from that. We've already did it a few times. The deli's constantly giving food away at the end of the night. Um, you know, I've been involved in charity auctions with my shoes. I've been involved in charity speak, speaking engagements. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think it, it really has, it, it comes down to us to be able mm -hmm. to teach our children this. There's a lot of learning moments right now. And, yes. and I think if you're an 18 year old, I think if you're an 18 year old right now who's not listening to their parents, by osmosis, you're going to learn that charity is pretty, pretty cool right now. You know. Yeah, I, and you know there, there was a there was a movement of the millennials. Buy one, you always get something for free. But right now, it's not about buying one get one for free. It's about giving away for free. Period. That's right. What yeah, and that's a movement. that's a, that that'll be. And also during fight like trial by fire, like <sighs> this is scare. I think part of the scare and the and the and the emotion will make these millennials or whoever the next generation is, my son, 12 years old, I don't know the name of his generation, but he's behind the millennials. He'll remember this and it'll be a really, this will change. This is going to change the world for, for the good, for the better. It's, it's so redefining what all industry in the fashion industry, when we get to see highbrow fashion industry started making, uh, making sanitizers out of their fragrance shops that you know that, Cost right. probably a dollar to make by selling for seventy five, you know, and and yeah. and but they're they able to look and and see the impact what they're doing using materials now that are more sustainable for the environment, and that bleeds through everything else in the industry that is contingent to fashion. Food is an art form as well, and we begin to see that people are not wasting, and the people are more responsible giving. And all different guests I've interviewed thus far, what makes me most proud to hear is that. The competitiveness is out the window. The togetherness is what we live with and be kind to each other and support each other through this time is what I'm hearing and what I'm learning every day being here. And that's incredible what you guys are doing and what you're supporting. And yes. I, I am so proud to to wear your brand, wear your shoes because Thank the you. philosophy that you carry is not just a brand, it's a philosophy. And that's something that, that I admire very much. I appreciate that, man. I really appreciate it. You know, her whole the whole story you know, myself and, you know, other people in my kind of genre of street, kind of like street luxury, we snuck in the back door of the, you know, of the Louis Vuitton party, you know what I mean? Like, quote unquote. But there's a respect, you know? I think what a lot of people need to, to learn during times like this is, and where I, I grew up learning this is, respect you know you have to respect people that aren't doing well around you and help them you know you have to have a respect for someone you know you have to have a, res a certain level of respect no matter how much money someone has or doesn't have you know it's just a respect level that's the that's what the that's what we can learn out of this and that we are treating everyone basically exactly the same uh no matter what but you know at the end of the day people like nice things Yes. And they don't need to be so expensive all the time. I think this is going to teach the luxury brand something as well. Like we're all one, we're all one human race, man. You know what I mean? It's not about just killing, killing everybody's pocket. Maybe now it's time for, this is also will contract. It's going to teach luxury brands that, you know, the 50 times markup for a, for a perfume maybe is not the move anymore. You know what I mean? I, I, you couldn't have said it better. I, I love yeah. hearing that. And I love hearing that from somebody who's in the high in high fashion industry that yeah. because of your, your gesture and your, your set example for the businesses out there. And we are, we are adjusting yeah. from, from the editor in chief conversation I'm having to magazine, trying to adjust on how to be more responsible of putting stories out there that reflects humanity. And that we desperately need. It's a reset for all of us. And, and I couldn't be, more appreciative of that because that's when we get to yeah. learn and that's when we get to emulate and follow an example like yours. So thank yeah, it's you a lot so of, much. Yeah, it's a lot of things. It's a lot of, uh, I feel like this guy, you know, I forget his name. He did the brand Tom's. 
Yes, um, yes. That was the first time as a in the fashion business that I realized someone he made something and then he gave something away. That was, I think, the first time we all really maybe people were doing that before him, but I feel like this is a really good time for. I mean, if you're Louis Vuitton or or the Pernod Group or Big Luxury Richard uh, uh, Richemont, like you could reset the whole. Like maybe when someone buys a Birkin bag, you know, eight thousand dollars also goes to you know giving water to a town town in you know who wherever, right? Like I love you saying that because next week's my my guests are all supermodels and huge influencers, and they're yeah. all modeled with a cost, and a lot of it is putting that. Yeah, make them money. hammer that hammer that, yes. that that home. Yeah, and I think that we're learning too with this time that we know there's a platform, and if you have the audience and you have the capability to reach out and educate and support people, this is a time to do it, and 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 we will set a new normal, and the new normal will be adjusted to the way that we're more responsible along the way. I keep saying this, and I'm learning this: is be kind to each other along the way because it is not easy for all of us. Some days, I don't want to sit here. <laughs> I'll be honest; right. I'm tired. Right. And some days, I go, I need you to be can't here. Can't wait because, to do it, yeah. You know, because the reflection, what I get to see in you, is encouragement for me to continue to speak loudly what we need to do as a community. So I'm grateful for that, and thank you for your time today, and continue to be our first liners. And and I'm, I can't wait. Tell the day that I get to come to your restaurant and sit come down on over. And meal with you. Come on over. We're here. And I and Thank next time I'm around, we're in the same city, we'll definitely uh go out, go get some uh you take me somewhere. <laughs> you know what? I'll cook for you. How's that? Okay, done. Done yeah. deal. Thank done. you so much and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Ciao. Bye bye guys. Thank you. Thank you guys. So that was John Buscemi, shoe designer turned restaurant owner, with Uncle Polly's, who was giving food to the first responders and first liners absolutely free on a daily basis. And this is what makes me so excited to be here, be able to share this special edition with you guys, putting spotlight on food industry and restaurant owners, continue to give back to the community and what we're learning from it and how we will continue to do that after the pandemic's over. Mm -hmm.